Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Trade Up. I hope you all are doing really well. Through the course of today's lecture, we'd actually be continuing with Tony Morrison. And why I say continuing? Because if you remember, we've already looked at Sula. Additionally, we've also looked at Langston Hughes. And whenever we are talking about writers like Langston Hughes, like Sula, the novel written by Tony Morrison, we are actually talking about a continuation of this canon, which is called as a Black Afro American canon, which was started by all these writers. So that is the reason I say uh, that this particular lecture is actually in continuation with some things which we've already looked at through the course of the Crash Course series that we've been uh, so far covering. So do remember, whenever we talk about Beloved, Beloved is actually a modern Gothic novel. That's right, you heard it right. So whenever we are discussing about the Gothic tradition, we are able to see that this is actually a modern Gothic, a 20th century Gothic novel, which is actually touching upon a very complex issue of race. Racism. The color segregation, the emotional, the psychological, the physical impact that it has on all the Afro-American citizens living in America. So certainly it is actually trying to catalog a very important and an interesting historical juncture in American fiction. So here, of course, this tale, which is an example of modern Gothic fiction. So it is an example of modern Gothic fiction. It is also a work of historiography. It is also a work of historiography. Why? Because we are able to see that it is actually referencing to a particular episode in American history which still haunts Americans in a very, very big way. So we are able to see these sporadic cases of ra racism coming recurrently. Uh, whenever we are talking about the Trump's administration versus the Biden's administration, we are saying that Biden has promised America to definitely have less amount of segregation based on color, which is predominantly called as racism. So here, of course, a very, very interesting piece, which is trying to trace the legacy of racism. It is trying to tell you about the devastating impact that racism can have on a life of a child as well and how racism does not let even the ghost actually uh, literally the ghosts are also shuddering in with a lot of with a lot of you can say fear that oh wow you know they're also being they are also being controlled by people. So do remember, it's, it's a very, very touching tale. Uh, why I say historiography? Because it's talking about color segregation. It is discussing the concept of color segregation, uh, which was pre prevalent in the American society during the time. So it's capturing that moment of color segregation. That's point number one. Uh, the second important point, or rather the third important point that you should actually remember over here is that there was an entire tradition there was an entire tradition of Afro-American writings, which was a kind of a social protest literature. And thus, this particular novel, so there is this entire tradition of something which is called as your Afro-American canon, Afro-American canon. Remember, when we were looking at your mini modules, when we were looking at your mini modules, we discussed the concept of decanonization. Can anyone, a sporting volunteer, tell me what do we mean by decanonization? What do we mean by this term called decanonization. We just very, very recently, last week during the mini modules on Derrida, by the way, tomorrow is the last class on Derrida deconstruction. So do remember to join in on the grade up application. So what do we mean? What do we mean by decanonization? Can someone be brave enough to tell me the meaning very quickly, revising what we've been looking at in the mini modules class? Okay, very, very quickly, very excellent, excellent. Ina is right, Savitri T is right, very good. Shubhangi Trivedi is absolutely right, excellent. Very good, Shruti Bhatta Mishra is right. Yeah, Mayuri, it can, uh, to a large degree of extent, it can definitely help. Very good, Soumya, removing the popular discourse, excellent. Tan uh, Tahmina Khan is also right. Sumangla Patra is also right. Harshita, Aftara, everyone's giving the right answer. Excellent. You are trying to actually contest. You are trying to not take the canon at the face value and you're trying to replace it with countercultures. Remember, this is exactly what we said uh, is basically being discussed even in cultural studies. Cultural studies is telling us about the development of subcultures, right? And here, Afro-American culture was trying to displace. Afro-American culture was actually trying to displace and uproot the white hegemonic American canon.
there was a prevalence of the white puritan hegemonic canon which is getting replaced in the 20th century by this emerging frontier this is an example of decanonization i hope now you are understanding anyone who wants clarification on this term can also look at uh, look at the pdf that we shared on the telegram channel or you can also revisit the lecture uh, the links have also been shared on the telegram channel on the concept of decanonization so please remember that tony morrison the writer who's recipient of two pulitzer prizes as well as who's getting the nobel prize becoming the first afro american woman to get the nobel prize here we are able to see that she is also participating in the process of decanonization she is also trying to ensure that there is a registration of protest voice by the black americans the black americans are not staying silent the black americans are also contributing right so that is another interesting point that you can note down if you wish to uh, the fact that how this is actually a part of something which is called as your angry social protest novels right something which is very very famously called as your one second i don't know why am i not able to write on this part uh, oh god I'm so sorry. You know, my my screen is actually frozen. Oh God, God. Okay, no worries. I think I'll try to deal with it. Uh, so so please do remember this. Do uh, keep this in mind that it's actually a part of your angry social protest novel. Angry social protest novel, right? So that is what you're basically able to see. Also, this work is brilliantly capturing how racism was impacting not just the physical aspect but also emotionally and psychologically. It was a very draining process. Emotionally, psychologically. logically it was a devastating process so you know what is why is this important why is this important what are we looking at we are saying racism racism was damaging racism had devastation uh, right uh, had devastated basically our physical physical of course because i was uh, uh, like you know i if i was a black i had to work in the southern plantation farms um if i was a black i would not get those respectable white collar jobs if i was a black i wouldn't really get those prime jobs very easily right uh, so essentially that is what we were looking at that you know racism was something which was at the bottom even of uh, your industrial selection how people were getting selected also so here what you were able to see of course physical aspect was there but emotional and psychological aspect these new writers are focusing on the emotional devastation on the psychological devastation on the emotional devastation on the psychological devastation can give me one second i'm so sorry i'm just trying to do away with this thing oh god what's wrong with this just a second So you know, on my screen there's this one tag which has just got stuck and it's not moving. Anyway, no worries. Uh, at all, as long as it's not visible, I can see it's not visible on the screen. I'll try to do a, uh, a like you know without this. So here, what we are looking at here, what we are basically seeing here, we are able to see that these people are trying to tell you about the identity crisis, and this will be a major theme in Afro-American writings during the later part. So writers like Toni Morrison, writers like Ralph Ellis. and writers like Ishmael Reed so Ishmael Reed is also a writer who's coming recurrently in your PhD entrances also all these writers are trying to capture the identity dislocation they're trying to say that you know unfortunately the blacks of the new generation are not proud of their blackness at all and that is the problem that is a problem that they're trying to address that these people are psychologically wounded it's just not the physical wound that you have given me you have actually given me a psychological stigma i'm not proud of my black ancestry anymore so what has this resulted in this has actually resulted in a loss of identity this has resulted in loss of identity what is very very popularly called as a loss of identity there is a loss of identity that we are able to see over here okay so please keep this aspect properly you know i'm not able to write in this part of the screen so i and neither am i able to see this part of the screen so please excuse me i don't know what's wrong with this so do remember that this modern gothic fiction work by tony morrison is actually trying to celebrate the black aesthetic actually and how is it celebrating by highlighting the perils of slavery by highlighting the psychological damage of racism by telling you about the identity crisis that 
that racism is actually put in place so that is what we are uh, we are able to look at and rightfully so she is getting the 1993 nobel prize the reason why toni morrison is getting the nobel prize is because of the fact that she's trying to capture moments in american history she's trying to capture moments in american history beloved is of course the story of seed so it's a wonderful story that you are having uh, now there was actually a mail that i had received from one of you and also it was posted on the doubt please remember beloved is actually an example of trauma studies also beloved is also an example of trauma studies trauma studies tells you about war literature trauma studies tells you about partition literature trauma study tells you about holocaust literature anything that has led uh, like you know a, a sort of a mental a mental breakdown or anything which has actually resulted in me mentally uh, like you know not being very happy and stable like septimus smith and mrs dalloway that is a part of trauma study so trauma studies is also looking at the trauma of racism it is also looking at the trauma of racism that how racism was actually having a debilitating impact it had a very you know people who were blacks they would belittle themselves they would think that they were inferior at the very beginning unfortunately so this brilliant study uh, the beloved uh, like you know beloved by tony morrison is also an example of trauma studies keep that in mind it's telling you the story of seed who's actually a former slave just listen to this 2 minutes and then of course we will continue moving forward so seed is a former slave she's been living with her 18 year old daughter she's been living with this daughter of hers and what is the name of the daughter name of daughter's denver denver is the name of the daughter so seed is the slave she has been living with her 18 year old daughter denver and you know previously uh, we were also having this character of baby sugs of baby sugs who is baby sugs baby sugs is a mother in law baby sugs is seeds mother in law seeds mother in law is called baby sugs and seeds uh, daughter is called denver now just before the death of the mother in law just before the death of baby sugs don't worry i'm just quickly telling you so that you have a little idea about the beloved and things beyond this page becomes easier for all of you now baby sugs is actually passing away and before baby sugs pass away two children two sons of seed two sons of seed so seed was also having two sons and what are the two sons howard is one of them howard and bugler howard and bugler they have escaped howard and bugler the two sons of seed just before the death of baby sugs they have escaped they have gone uh, now many people and seed also included thinks that it is because of the ghost it is because of the ghost and where is the ghost the ghost is actually haunting and this is the opening lines 142 uh, 124 bluestone road 124 bluestone road 124 bluestone road is a road that we are able to see that the ghost is actually haunting and uh, uh, so so seed believes that howard and bugler they have escaped because they were worried about the ghost but no Howard and Bugler actually loved the ghost because it's believed that the ghost was their younger sister. And you know what is very chilling? The chilling account is that even the ghost is actually scared of the siren. Even the ghost is scared of the siren. Right? And why is the ghost why she become a ghost? She's become a ghost because she's been killed. And why is she been killed? Because killing is better than she coming and living in this world of racism. Killing is any day better than she surviving this world of racism. She surviving this world of racism, so killing is far better. Killing is considered to be far better according to Seed. All right, so that is what you are able to see. So please remember, it's a, it's a wonderful account. We'll be looking at each and every aspect right now. Uh, please feel free to connect on uh, the Telegram platform for the PDF of this particular um, this particular session and other PDFs also in general. And and additional updates other initiatives that we keep on taking it's nirja english ugc net that's the telegram channel feel free to connect over here also i'm sharing the updated schedule so as you know that you know we've just completed um, you know five lectures at 10 pm uh, but now new fresh series of lectures are starting on both literary criticism as well as history of english literature so uh, this is the schedule this is the schedule for the this week's uh, 10 pm classes they're starting these are the day Dates. Please take a look at the dates. It's sixteenth, eighteenth, twentieth, twenty-first, twenty-second. I will share, uh, like you know, a screenshot on the Telegram channel. Also, it is at ten p.m. on the Grade Up application. This will, these classes would be conducted on the Grade Up application, and these are the topics that we would be covering. And besides this, please keep your rotolid handy. 
because we will be constantly referring to rotulage for the completion of this particular series okay and last week the series that we had started on literary criticism that will also be continued these are the dates for the literary criticism module uh, these are the dates that are there okay these are the dates these are the writers that we will be covering all these mini module classes all these mini module classes would be conducted on the grade up application uh, these days of course on the telegram channel i'm also sharing the link for the grade up application so uh, i will share the schedule so these are the two rosters if you want to take a screenshot you can take a screenshot otherwise i will be sharing the uh, presentation also on the telegram channel and i'll also share the roster uh, details with all of you okay and besides for the classroom students we're conducting some extra sessions next week uh, so if you wish i'll i'll share the links of those sessions if you want to join us so on 22nd at 8 o'clock we have a class on dr faustus and elizabethan drama 24th we are having a class on way of the world and restoration drama 25th we are having a class on doll's house and henrik epson's contribution towards developing drama and on 26th we have a very very important lecture on post war theater okay so feel free all the sessions are available i will be making these sessions available uh, uh sorry is there a lag is there a lag that has taken place okay i thought there was a lag okay uh, all right so uh okay so great so please feel free to let me know if you have any doubts regarding that also okay now coming on to beloved like i told you beloved is actually a work which is also receiving the pulitzer prize all right uh, so this particular work why was it important because it was actually trying to capture uh, you know whenever we are discussing whenever we are discussing there was a question that had come that tony morrison is she writing about historiographical moments and you know tony morrison was also asked in her interview that you know all your novels are telling us about racism and she, what was her reply her reply was that you know racism is prevalent the minute racism will not be prevalent in the society i'll stop writing about it you know imagine if you are uh, if someone tells you that oh you know you are a feminist writer or oh you are a uh, you are an environmental writer why do you keep on writing about these concerns only so what will you say you will say okay fine L let let these concerns stop i will stop writing about them right that is what tony morrison was saying that is what tony morrison was saying i hope this uh this lamp of mine doesn't fall anyway uh, so that is what tony morrison said tony morrison said like you know because racism is there therefore i'm speaking about racism had it not been there i i i wouldn't have really have spoken about it so i think that was a very befitting reply about this completely now what is this work basically looking at it is actually looking at the devastation that people have to undergo the identity crisis that they have to fa uh, face whenever they are suffering whenever they are suffering from racism or whenever they are at the risk giving end okay now beloved is of course talking about slavery and there is another work of tony morrison called jazz which talks about the harlem renaissance jazz talks about harlem renaissance and remember today only at least if you cannot go back to the lecture do go to the telegram channel and take out the pdf of sula take out the pdf of langston hughes and revise those two pdfs of both sula and langston hughes just revise those pdfs okay because then you will be able to make a connection between afro american writings even on the grada platform on the youtube platform there is a lecture there are two three lectures on afro american writings you can just go over those uh, writings as well that will give you a lot of clarity and perspective into the black writings and how the black writings are critical of racism but in very different ways like uh, for example you know I, I, this is very important this is a good point please remember even afro american writings even afro american writings are undergoing change so for example richard wright richard wright was plainly criticizing richard wright the afro american writer was actually writing only social protest novels he was only writing social protest novels he was only and only concerned about registering that you people are wrong you people are not uh, treating us in an equal fashion what is going around with the society so that was richard right 
but slowly and steadily afro american writings are actually just not critical of the society and racism they're also talking about identity crisis they're also discussing identity crisis they're also talking about the perils of racism they're also talking about the grave emotional psychological devastating impact that uh, that racism is having on everyone and here what we are able to see we're able to see that this is telling like i'm telling you i'm not not able to change this one second you know I, i'll take a screenshot it's a really weird screenshot um, that i'm not able to write anything over here anyway uh, but i can see it from here i hope all of you can also see it so this is telling us a story of seed and how seed is actually uh, like you know her entire story of a slave and the family of a slave what is happening in her life how beautifully tony morrison is literally making us feel we are in the same shoes as seed we are experiencing the same we're experiencing the same fate that seed has to undergo in kentucky that's the same things that we are able to uh, literally uh, identify with we are we are able to identify with her okay so please remember that now seed actually when we are talking about seed she lives as a free woman okay uh, she is held as a prisoner why is she a prisoner despite being a free woman why is she a prisoner she is a prisoner because of her memories look at septimus smith look at the characters look at these characters like septimus smith look at these characters like uh, kurt skirts in heart of darkness these people are free in at the moment when you know they're talking about it or look at emperor jones remember uh, uh, classroom students we were looking when we were looking at american drama look at emperor jones for example look at emperor jones for example all these characters right uh, so here of course eugene o'neil cuts by um, joseph conrad septimus smith by virginia wolf these characters are caught up because of the memory the burden of memory what is the theme what is this theme called as this theme is called as burden of memory burden of memory uh, now here if you remember here if you remember a work that we had spoken about we had spoken about crime and punishment where we spoke about rascal nikov rascal Nico was not at all guilty. Dostoevsky is showing us. Dostoevsky was showing us, and this is also something that we covered in this Crash Course series only on YouTube platform. If you remember. that Dostoevsky was actually showing us Rascal Nico who was not having the burden of memory. He was not having the burden of memory. You had to literally nudge him. You had to force him. भाई तुमने crime कर दिया है. At least show some sort of repugnance. He had created his own justification system that oh no, uh, this is good. I had actually like you know killed someone who was about to die only irrespective. So he had created his own rationality. He had created his own rationality. That is actually because he wanted to counter the burden of memory. He wanted to counter the burden of memory. So please remember, there's a very important theme that here Virginia, uh, Virginia Woolf, Tony Morrison's talking about. That is the burden of memory. That is about the burden of memory. So please keep this aspect properly in mind. All right, please keep this aspect properly in mind. Now this novel is actually inspired. It is based on a true story of Margaret Garner, and this question comes as it is in your PhD entrances. This is a direct question that you are having. This is a direct question that you are having. So sorry. Okay. Now, uh, you know, and it wasn't surprising. Tony Morrison said that it's just not Margaret Garner. It's actually the story of each and every. afro american a uh, person who's experienced racism okay now she had actually escaped she had run away from the kinetic uh, from the kentucky plantation uh, with her husband robert and their children she'd run away uh, you know here i want you to look at here i want you to look at all your black writings like writings of phillis whiteley phillis whiteley is of course not at all she's she's of course educated enough to pen down her poetry or look at frederick douglas right or gustavus vasa the slave narratives of frederick douglas or gustavus vasa so you know the slave narratives the escape literature the escape literature or take a look at uh, how mark twain uh, by presenting us the adventures of huckleberry finn is also trying to show us how a slave is trying to escape his lot or look at harriet beecher stowe's uncle tom's cabin uncle tom's cabin is also trying to show that how tom is trying to help people escape you know there's a very very powerful theme of escaping 
there's a very powerful theme of escaping uh, there was a mo- uh, like you know there, there's actually a book by mahmoodi uh, escape from taliban and there's a manisha kerala movie also on this uh, that you know an escape from taliban whenever circum- why are we escaping the fact that characters are escaping is actually criticism of the society the fact that characters are not you know why would you escape why would you run away when things are hostile when things are not in your favor that is when you want to run away that is when you are like okay i've i've given up now i cannot tolerate it any more i really cannot tolerate it any more so you know what is tony morrison trying to say she is trying to say that escape narratives are oblique criticisms they are oblique criticisms why do we escape we escape when it is like you know absolutely it's like a pressure cooker even when when a, a pressure cooker cannot hold it that's when you know it will start bursting that is when it, you know the, the particles will start escaping or when the milk is boiling it'll actually be completely it'll try to escape the vessel because of the fact that you know it can no more tolerate the heat inside so that is what you're basically looking at that you know tony morrison is making a very powerful commentary that no one is to- everyone's talking about slave narratives and how slave narratives are having this theme of escaping but she's saying that this theme of ex- escaping is actually a theme of criticism this theme of escaping is actually a theme of criticism that is what she is trying to say okay and of course in reality when we are talking about margaret garner this is about margaret garner so margaret garner actually tried to take refuge in ohio or right this this work is also based out of cincinnati ohio but their owner their owner and law officers their owner and law officers soon caught up with the family and uh, you know margaret uh, what she does is she killed she killed her young daughter when they were caught when they were caught so margaret garner she killed her own daughter because she said that you know uh, it's better to kill her and let her escape this torturous world of slavery so imagine margaret garner and her husband and her children were escaping when they were caught when they were caught in order to rather than going back rather than being repatriated rather than being uh, like you know sent to the same situation she is wanting her daughter to escape she is rather wanting so you know uh, works like like beloved works like even for that matter media by euripides media by euripides it's showing mothers as killing but you know in media's euripides as media the mother is killing in order to take revenge the mother is killing in order to take revenge and here the mother is killing in order to get uh, like you know give the child a better future give the child a better future it's obviously a, a like you know a great cause of debate as to whether it is making any sense because you know you're killing a tender child just because of the fact that you think it's unbearable that is also a crime that's of course a cause of discussion but you know that is the amount of torture people have to undergo when they are under the pressure of slavery okay so please remember that all right and see this of course like you know she's a very devoted mother she is uh, like you know she is of course a, you know when you look at the character of seed you will fall in love with seed because she's so caring she's having this nourishing ability and she's also got the prudence she's also got the intelligence to understand what circumstances are conducive and what circumstances are not conducive so she has that mental agility also despite being a slave so that is another uh, like you know because obviously when will you when will you escape only when you are alert okay bhai chalo ab bhag sakte hain let's go aisa nahi hai that you know you just escape uh, without making a proper plan so that's also showing mental agility that is also uh, a great cause that you're having now here what you are able to see you are able to see that she is also see this also killing her children in order to protect them from slavery see this also killing her children in order to protect them from slavery right i i want you to compare this i want you to compare this action with riders to the sea riders to the sea is a work which is written by the irish playwright called jm shringe jm shringe is the same jm shringe who's also writing playboy of the western world and i want you to make the comparison between how we are able to see that the mother in riders to the sea is losing all her children to the destructive sea and here the mother is actually trying to protect the children and how is she protecting her way of protecting is by killing them so you know how and you know the entire treatment of motherhood in 20th century literature literature otherwise you are having these changing notions of motherhood which is a very interesting theme altogether 
okay so please keep that in mind and only her 2 year old daughter she dies right and the school teacher believing that seed is crazy decides her not to take her back school teacher is like no uh, that you know seed looks a little crazy a little eccentric they don't want to deal with her at all uh, now seed later has beloved inscribed on her daughter's tombstone so you know on the tombstone of her daughter is where she is getting the name is inscribed as beloved and that is the title of the uh, that is the title of our work written by tony morrison over here okay uh, now although she had intended uh, that you know it should have read dearly beloved uh, but of course uh, she couldn't really pay for two words you know it's just like i don't know uh, I, i hope you you guys never ever have to face that circumstance but you know when you are you're getting obituaries also written in the newspapers you have to be very measured because for each and every word uh, that you are putting in you getting to pay the newspaper whenever you are writing an obituary on the death of someone uh, so the same thing in order to get the name uh, like you know she wants dearly beloved uh, put on the tomb but she is not having money to pay for two letters so she just writes beloved she just writes beloved and this is a question that can actually come over here that you know uh, that's of course there so so this is like a very poignant incident very very poignant incident if you read the work uh, entirely uh, so here what we are able to see is again the mode of you know there's a very powerful line in the there's a very very powerful line at the very beginning which talks about how she's requesting the readers to you know she's urging the readers that you need to be uprooted from your existing place and you have to be put into the context then only will you be able to understand my tale the narrator says that the narrator is telling you that that you know we as readers need to be uprooted and then only we will be able to we will be able to understand the problem that see this undergoing okay uh, remember we have already discussed this flashbacks analepsis and prolepsis we've actually spoken about this concept analepsis and prolepsis uh, so uh, 20th century novels are considering you know they are all talking about memory and memory is never static i might be thinking about you know 2020 uh i might be thinking about 2010 i might be thinking about 1947 partition i might be thinking about 10th may 1857 when uh, for the very first time in meerut the revolt of 1857 started so you know memory is never ever a vassal memory is never ever a slave of time or you know it's never a slave of chronological time i would say it is never a slave of chronological time also uh, analepsis is flashback analepsis is flashback what do we mean by analepsis it's flashback and prolepsis are flash forwards prolepsis are flash forwards so flashbacks and flash forwards are the two things that we are having over here and the novel of course opens in 1873 that is the opening uh, and what we are able to see denver is there like i told you they are living in ohio they are living in 127 bluestone road and this is actually haunted by beloved this is actually haunted by the child that seed has killed and why has seed killed the child seed has killed the child because seed never wanted that her daughter should experience slavery okay and of course what we are able to see we are able to see that you know the hauntings get even more furthered uh, and and how are they getting furthered with the arrival of paul d uh, paul d is also a man who is completely taken away by his slave past and you know he he keeps his feelings in the tobacco bin of his heart he's keeping his feelings in the tobacco bin of his heart so there was this beautiful jest i think there's a jester uh, essay if you ever want to analyze beloved for your research you can actually take a look at it opening tony morrison is opening the tobacco bin of seed's heart so she is opening the tobacco bin she is opening the tobacco bin of seed's heart so tobacco bin is actually a metaphor for paul d because paul d is like smoking consistently but he is not sharing he is not sharing his opinions at all he is not sharing his opinions at all okay uh, now he is of course paul d was working on the same plantation as seed and both of them even have a relationship uh, so that is of course how the story actually also proceeds uh, you know what we are able to see we are able to see that this entire work is of course showing you the life of seed uh, how sh- her life is actually progressing but besides that it's also highlighting the theme of racism 
okay uh, she knows the things that suggest that she is the reincarnation of seeds lost daughter so the uh, reincarnation of seeds lost da daughter uh, now you know uh, what you have to basically remember is that a mother has killed her daughter at that juncture but the mother is always guilty seed is always guilty she's not happy it's not that she's happily killed her daughter at that spur of moment she thought that it was prudent not to allow her daughter to live in this uh, horrible world of being a black <coughs> but she's constantly being uh, consistently being burdened by the burden of killing her own daughter okay uh, see the of course loses her job she's completely fixated on the beloved um and uh, you know what 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 we're basically able to see over here is that uh, that of course mental traumas ultimately they open up they worsen if they're not treated uh, these maladies are even worse they're very cancerous in nature tony morrison talks about it that you know um, the physical cancer is fine but the mental cancer is something which is even more torturous the mental cancer is something which is even more torturous can actually have a very corrupting influence you can actually feel very very bad uh, so so that is of course there you know this entire work this entire work is trying to bring this one important part through the story of seed through the story of denver through the story of uh, seed's two sons through the story of seed's mother in law through the story of beloved um through the story of the ghost beloved uh, what what the story is trying to highlight is the impact of this horrible movement of racism how afro americans had to deal with their lot how afro americans didn't really have a lot of say there was constant identity crisis that they actually had to undergo so that is what the 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 key area or the most important aspect over here of the beloved comes out across us now what all things you have to remember it's a modern gothic novel it is an example of uh, afro american writings it is a social protest novel it is also talking about identity crisis it is talking about the emotional impact and the psychological impact uh, due to racism it is showing us the character of seed and seed how she is murdering her own daughter in order to let her daughter escape racism because she doesn't really deems racism to be an appropriate fit you know all the parents really want the best for their kids and that is what seed also has this desire so that is how the work is progressing okay now let's very quickly uh, like you know shift gears a little and do questions and remember last time i told you that now we'll be going on uh, with the questions on a pattern basis okay so let's start a little with classical literature with our classroom students we were rather looking at class uh, classical literature questions at the 3 pm class also but let's take it further uh, so that you can actually revise your classical literature and come so these are some questions that we have for all of you okay um and uh, before that yeah let's 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 just very very quickly take a look at the questions so this is question number 1 this is question number 2 this is question number 3 let's answer these questions very very quickly Uh, EF has asked a very good question. Is it an example of magical realism? Toni Morrison herself says it's a modern gothic. She herself calls it as a modern gothic, and she rather says that you know it's actually a reality. The magical parts are just added, uh, right? The fictitious parts are only added, but it's actually telling you about a real historiographical episode of racism. So that is something which is important. Yes, of course, Saima. Of course, of course, definitely. definitely you can uh, certainly take this any topic which which can be backed with good evidence is actually a good qualifying topic for research and something that you also something that piques your interest because that is very important okay fantastic i can see some of you even writing it down which classical tragedian lived in both 1st century bc and 1st century ad the trick is this has to be a roman okay the trick is this has to be a roman and who is this roman that we are talking about we are basically talking about seneca who's writing the tragedies of blood who's writing the the tragedies of blood so this person is famously called as seneca this person is famously called as seneca right who wrote Homer? 
homostrophic odes homostrophic odes during pax romana homostrophic odes please remember this because many a times i think people get it wrong but it's actually horus horus who's writing homostrophic odes horus who's a writer of ars poetica we will be covering this topic next week also when we look at literary criticism the remaining parts okay so horus is actually known for writing homostrophic odes the next question i cannot see much of plato's uh, philosophy has been written in the form of dialogues has been written in the form of dialogues he was using dialogues remember in the last lecture of mini modules what had we discussed aristotle had got the you know he said the ocular method at and the dialogue method was not something which was very effective and therefore aristotle is getting something which is called the modern scientific method of descriptive writing of trying to justify your writing trying to make a point and justifying that point that is what aristotle is engaging in that is what aristotle is writing about okay so please keep that aspect properly in mind question number 4 question number 5 question number 6 please keep on making this question bank we are going in a very methodological order so first today we've actually looked at questions we're looking at questions from the classical literature or which is also famously called as the greco roman period the greco roman period that you are having so you can go back to your classical writings you can go back to your classical literature because remember uh, a lot of your other topics also get covered like augustan age gets covered because augustan age is actually going back it's coming from the reign of emperor ex uh, uh, emperor augustus okay all right so let's see how many of you get the right answer fantastic fantastic very good great 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 sorry one second I'm so sorry. One second, please. Yeah, so sorry. Yeah, there's something wrong with the screen. You know, today I'm having this. Okay. Anyway, yes. Uh, I think most of you have got it right. A maximum of how many speaking characters were there in classical Greek tragedy? So we could maximum of three writers. A maximum of three actors. Classroom students, I hope you remember because this is something that we just looked at at three p.m. We were talking about this only. That of course there was chorus, but then there was just like you know this actor who would wear masks, and there were maximum of three actors that you had. Which is Aristotle's surviving work on ethics? Now Aristotle. his father's name was nicomachus and aristotle's son's name was also nicomachus and he's writing something which is famously called as the nicomanian ethics it just famously called as the nicomanian ethics and nicomanian ethics is a work on ethics where he talks about issues like friendship he says that you know we need to have uh, as many friends as our fingers can actually count we should not have many friends because then we can't really trust people all the time so that's a wonderful work on ethics that is based basically discussing about the the period the time period that is what he is talking about so uh, you know this this entire work is predominantly talking about the time period okay uh, the next question is which period is called the hellenistic period now when you are talking about the hellenistic period i will just write this thing down over here 336 bc so period of alexander to 146 bc is called the hellenistic period 336 bc to 146 bc is actually called the hellenistic period of uh, the hellenistic period is something that matthew arnold also looks back at so when you are doing uh, classical greek literature you can actually go back to a lot of your romantic poetry uh, because a lot of keatsian shelian ideas are actually getting inspired by classical writers you can also go back uh, to your literature which is dealing with augustan age or matthew arnold nietzsche all of them are very classically rooted so this is the hellenistic period that we are talking about right this is the hellenistic period that we have Okay let's come on to the next question question number 7 question number 8 very very quickly please question number 7 question number 8 very very quickly please
which Roman classical work is written in the form of letters addressed to Piso and which Roman classicist wrote Ars Amatoria. Very, very quickly, very simple questions. I don't really think you should actually require a lot of time for this. Very simple question. Excellent. Uh, so Ars Poetica, Horace's Ars Poetica or Art of Writing Poetry is the right answer. This is something which I have already shared the schedule with all of you. So next week we will be covering and this is a work which is written by Ovid. Remember David Malouf. Remember David Malouf is writing an imaginary life. Who is David Malouf? David Malouf is an Australian writer and this Australian writer who has been shortlisted for the Booker Prize is actually writing an imaginary life. What is he writing? He's writing an imaginary life, and this imaginary life is an example which is a reworking of Ovid's life, Ovid's time in exile. That is what it's discussing. You can always just go back to this work also, Ars Poetica, Ars Amatoria. Both these works are very important Roman classical treatises that we're talking about. So Ars Poetica is an example of letters, right? It's it's a basically epistolary form which is addressed to Piso. The epistolary form which is addressed to Piso. Very good, Shubhangi. Very very good AF very good excellent Shubhangi Vikas excellent let's come on to the ninth question the ninth and the tenth question I will let you go a little early today because you know there's something uh, a little problematic and next class it will be a little bit of a problem for me if I don't rectify this so let's do these ten questions for today uh, please maintain your question bank what you guys can actually do is you can take out some lecture sheets or you can take out A4 size sheets and put all these questions under one category or you can just start you know a separate notebook for a very thin notebook you can take for your uh, question banks that we will be covering in a methodological way on the YouTube platform so you can always keep this handy okay let's see how many of you are able to answer this, this is a very very simple question okay let's see how many of you answer it correctly In Sophocles' play, how does Antigone die? Sophocles' play is showing Antigone dying via suicide. In classical literature, which genre developed in association with the coarse and mythological satra plays? So the classical literature which actually saw, so of course there was satiric drama, but comedy was developing. Comedy was developing, okay? Of course you have your satiric drama also, but when we are talking about, you know, it is having its association with the coarse and mythological satra, Plays so satires were predominantly comedies only during the classical time. So of course, so if you've given satiric plays, that is right. If you've given comedy, give yourself marks. Okay. So out of ten, you can mark yourself. How many marks have you got? And like I said, now going forward in all the classes, be it YouTube class, be uh, grade up. Of course, like you know the app class because it's a poll feature. So I really like putting in a lot of options. But of course, in the YT series, let's just definitely strive to cover a major chunk of questions in a methodological way okay so thank you so much for joining in it was fun um, addressing all of you do take a look at afro-american writings solo uh, solo i'm saying sola uh, uh, sula's uh, pdf on the telegram channel take a look at langston hughes pdf on the telegram channel take a look at afro-american writings and the pdf which is available on the telegram channel and do come a little prepared because it's always a good idea if you're revising the topics okay i will see you guys tomorrow both at 7 p.m and at 10 p.m and classroom students i will see you guys in the next 10 to 15 minutes okay take good care of yourself and uh, please see uh, sleep very well all right no mahi not today but you do have a class uh, tomorrow tomorrow you're having a class both at 7 p.m as well as at 10 p.m okay and this sunday also you have a class i'll just be putting that so uh, please be prepared all right thank you so much for joining in guys god bless bye bye, -bye.